All right, well, this is kind of a bonus session because I'm going to show you how to create a little more dimension in your image. If you zoom in on the reflection in the water, you'll notice that the selection itself is cut out very well, but the clouds themselves should be warped based on the reflection. And I'm going to show you how to do that using a displacement map. What we're going to do is make a duplicate of this image. And the duplicate we're going to flatten. And let's call this Pond Map. Now, a displacement map is simply a grayscale version of an image, and it will force the cloud picture to push up and to the left or down and to the right, creating the illusion of depth. What we're going to do is take this image and we're going to go to LAB color mode and we're going to select just the lightness channel. Now you'll notice the lightness channel itself is actually pretty good as far as defining detail in the image. So what we're going to do is take this image and we're going to click on just the lightness channel, go to image, mode, grayscale, and we're going to discard the other channels. Now we could use just this image right here as a displacement map, but I don't really want to do that. And my reasoning is uh, it has got so much detail in it, it'll look like we cut the clouds out into a mosaic. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the illusion of soft focus. And an easy way to do that is to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to blur this about 8 pixels or so. We can still identify shadow and highlight, but the main image itself is imperceptible. Now, that doesn't look like soft focus. That looks out of focus. So the very next step that you're going to do is go to Edit, Fade, Gaussian Blur. And we're actually going to fade this back to about 75% or so. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why wouldn't you just blur it 6 pixels? Well, it's not really the same thing. What this is essentially doing is making a duplicate of the layer, lowering the opacity by 25%, and then merging them together. When you duplicate the layer, you're blurring the top layer, lowering its opacity by 25%, and then merging it to a layer below that wasn't blurred at all. So it gives you that kind of nice, soft focus look. And the reason we want that is because we want the clouds to kind of look like they're rolled over the ripples in the pond. Now, displacement maps need to be saved in Photoshop format. So we're going to go up to File, Save As. We're going to save this out to the desktop. We're going to call it Pond Map and just click Save. Now, we'll get rid of that. Let's go back to our original image. We're going to go to the clouds folder and we're going to work on just the reflection layer. We're going to go to Filter, Distort, Displace. Now this is a very very old filter. This came out in one of the very first versions of Photoshop and what Displace means is take the layer you're working on and distort it based on a map. Now we created a map that's basically a grayscale version of our image. Any areas in the map that are light will push the cloud layer up and to the left, and any that are dark will push them down and to the right. So we're going to use about uh, 14 and 14. And we're going to click OK. We're going to grab the map and click Open. Now, if I zoom in here, you'll notice here is before. Here is after. Very subtle difference, but you'll notice that there is a very slight distortion. Now, what I like to do is take this layer and put it in overlay mode and set the opacity to about 75% and then make a duplicate of this layer and make the duplicate multiply mode in about 25 percent. There we go. So now we have something that looks a little more realistic as far as the ripples go. On your screen you'll see a much more dramatic effect. Now, 
we've got our clouds laid in, they're distorted, now we need to go in and punch up the color. You know, contrast, color, things like that, those are all things that we work on on a day-to-day -day basis and what I'm going to do is make a duplicate of this image and I'm going to call this duplicate contrast. We're going to merge that image together and we're going to make another duplicate and let's call this one color and we're going to make one more and we're going to call this one color mask. Our next steps are going to be addressing contrast, color, and color location.